to Fellowship 1-7, a biblical podcast from Child Evangelism Fellowship for the Christian community. On this podcast, we discuss various biblical topics, passages, and truths, and how those truths have impacted the lives of people around the world. I'm your host, Elizabeth Yoder. Today we're meeting with Brendan, and uh, we're discussing an international initiative that we have that is called Boxes of Books. And you're not new to this podcast. We've talked with you a couple of times. Right. Would you mind just telling us a little bit about yourself for our newer listeners? Sure, absolutely. Yeah, I work in the Global Partnership Ministries Department, and we are the fundraising department for Child Evangelism Fellowship, uh, the global uh, initiatives, the global needs. And I have been working in this uh, capacity for about 11 years now, and I've been in CEF for about 15 years. And so we handle things like the Boxes of Books initiative, the literature. Uh, We handle things like training missionaries all around the world and certainly supporting missionaries, particularly in countries where there is um, a lot of challenges to raise your funds, like Mm -hmm. uh, dangerous countries to do ministry, countries with uh, antagonistic governments. Um, So it's really exciting for us to be able to come alongside those missionaries who are on the front lines and support them in sharing the gospel. Yeah, and if you are a an, an avid listener to this podcast, you'll hear a couple uh, upcoming episodes or previous released episodes that discuss some of those ministries even. Um, I know one that we're going to be discussing is SPAN mm-hmm. and um, how CEF uses funds that we receive to help support missionaries across the world. So yeah. if that's not a plug for the rest of the episode, I don't know what it is, but there we go, <laughs> um, or the rest of the, the show. Sure. Well, let's get into this ministry because I think this is a very unique opportunity that CEF offers um, to other ministry leaders around the world. But before we before we get into what uh, Boxes of Books does, I think we need to tell what it is because mm-hmm. if you don't know, you don't know. So sure. would you mind giving us a little history of what Boxes of Books is, the origin, who A.A. A. Baker is, and uh-huh. all that fun stuff? Yeah, so we started Boxes of Books program in 1999, and uh, the the gentleman who was in charge of the Global Partnership Ministries Department, Mr. Baker, uh, Buzz Baker, was um, really excited about the idea of of equipping missionaries all around the world, but specifically by having us here in the United States support that effort. So we were at a conference one year. It was an international conference. And he turned to our president at the time, uh, Reese Kaufman, and said, Reese, you know, we should ask these missionaries to give, to send literature to other missionaries. And Reese said, Buzz, they're, they're poor missionaries. They don't have any money. How right. are they going right. to, you know, give to, we, we got to ask uh, donors with wealth and businesses and things. And he said, no, no, they, they got plenty of money. Let's ask these missionaries to do it. And, uh, and so they did, and they sent thousands of book boxes of literature that first year, and that really kicked off the program. Um, and just, just in the last 10 years, we have sent over 63 million pieces of gospel literature uh, to missionaries all around the world. That's awesome. And um, just to kind of explain a little bit further, how do we get these books? Is it Are they brand new items? Are they items that we purchase? Like, how do we get these books? books that we're sending to these missionaries. Yeah, so what is in a box of books? So a box of books is more a concept than a literal box. We don't have boxes that are the right, like the specific size and shape. And But what we do is we send packages of literature for two audiences. Mm -hmm. What audience is for the uh, trainer, the actual teacher or missionary themselves to be better equipped to share the gospel with children. So it's training books, training material. And the other audience is the children themselves. So devotional books and um, activity books and tracts. Those are the two kinds of literature that we send. And uh, we will send based on the country's need. So countries will send us requests. Mm -hmm. Um, And when I say a country, I mean a CEF chapter country. will send a request to the headquarters saying, hey, we need these things. And then we have those requests and we try to fill them by sending them a box. Uh, on average, we spend about $75 per box. And we can, we can do that really cost effective because sometimes we'll use material that's been, we call them seconds. Yeah. Yeah. Um, have you heard of seconds before? I have heard and I was hoping you had mentioned this. <laughs> yes. We, we use seconds. So uh, sometimes the piece will be 
printed just slightly askew. Mm -hmm. And so we don't want to sell that, but it's a great piece of uh, literature. It's a great tool. Uh, the gospel is still in it. We don't want to throw it away. Right. And so we give it for free or um, for shipping costs, which is where that $75 can come in. Sometimes it's printing where we don't have those seconds, but a lot of times you're just paying for the shipping to get those resources into countries that you might have to pay customs, um, you might have to sneak them in. There's all sorts of fun ways that we can be on the front lines and support those missionaries with this literature. Fun is a very appropriate term yes. to use, I guess. <laughs> um, so yeah, they're just they're, they're books that are filled with CEF resources mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, that we are trying to get out to our workers around the world. I think you summed that up very nicely. So what is the connection with, um, and I'm not sure if you know this, but is there a connection with Revival Ministry? Yeah, so Revival Revival Ministry Printing is a printing press, and they're in Ireland, um, and they are a wonderful partner to CEF. Uh, we often say that there's three ways that we get literature into a country. We either print it here, mm -hmm. and we send it, uh, or we... Second option, we contact Revival Press, and they have these massive drums that they're printing CEF literature for us all the time, and they'll do that under cost. So when I say partner, I truly mean that they are gospel partners. Their ministry is getting this literature to missionaries, and um, there, there is a cost, but it's, a, it's less than what it costs them to print. Right. And so again, some of that $75 per box will go towards um, them printing materials and they're in Ireland, so sometimes it's better to ship from there. It's more cost-effective if we're sending it to Asia or to um, Eastern Europe uh, or anywhere in Europe. Um, and they're great partners. And the third way is people will print in-country. Mm -hmm. So sometimes they have connections and they can print in-country. But we really love Revival Movement Press. Uh, and they're wonderful partners. That is awesome. So we've talked about, obviously, there's a need for these boxes to get around the world because they're full of the gospel. We want children to have the gospel. But outside of that, and I'm not negating that at all, um, why why do we see that this is such an important thing for our missionaries to use, to have visuals for children? Yeah. I remember watching a video of a young lady. She was 18 years old. She was thinking, she's in Africa. She was thinking what she can do now that she's 18. She's out of school and she wanted to be trained with CEF. And so she had just gone through this three month training. She was so excited to start a good news club. And in the video, she says that she um, talked to the director and said, what can, I, what can I do next? What's the next step? And he said, well, go and teach. And she said, okay, but where, where do I get the resources? And he said, we don't have any resources. Mm -hmm. And so she was using um, just pen and paper and she was drawing resources from the stories that she was trying to teach the children. Uh, and later in the video, we sent her a box of books and she just, her eyes start filling up with tears when she was looking through that box as soon as she opened it. And she was so excited because this was her life's passion. She, her purpose, can yeah. you imagine? Somebody determining, this is what God put me on planet Earth for, and I don't have what I need mm -hmm. to share the gospel with the children. And here, here it is, the box has arrived. And so she was just so excited. And it gives me that sense that we are really doing God's call when we send these literature boxes to missionaries. Oh, yeah, for sure. And it helps them in their teaching. Like just, just having something that kids can look at where they can engage their imagination, and it brings the Bible to life. Should the Bible be able to come alive on its own? Absolutely. I think that it can, especially for adults, but for kids, they need that resource. So for us to be able to partner with other people, um, one, it's a blessing to see how it's impacting their lives, but it's also so amazing to see how it's impacting the lives of kids, just like you were sharing. Her passion just flowed over into the students she was working with. Yeah, and, and actually the children become so excited because in many countries they don't see these kind of beautifully crafted visuals. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're used to people just only drawing uh, these things out or not having nothing at all. And so um, one story is a, a lady from West Africa was sharing that before boxes of books, she was creating her own resources and she would be able to get about 600 um, children uh, every every week or so when she would do her, her classes. Right. And when she received the box of books, she started using these beautiful lesson series, and the kids started telling each other, and her club grew from 600 kids to 2,400 kids. Oh, my word. Yes, so that's, that's quite a, a jump, four times as many kids. 
And um, that actually sounds like an un unthinkable number of kids for a club. But actually in Africa, that's pretty normal is that, man, you have these incredibly huge clubs. And so being able to put resources in their hands is just far and above more impactful than you can possibly imagine. Yeah, it, it truly is. And to put this into our world perspective here in the U.S., in my brain, I run VBS at my church. And, you know, for VBS here, we go all out. We decorate the stage. We have yeah. different, you know, it's bright, it's colorful. Mm -hmm. We we want to fit this certain theme. We want kids to be immersed in that. And for these teachers, that's all they want. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, we have these these giant flashcards that they get to use. And that's all they want. And to see that kids are engaged in something that, from our perspective, is so simple. Mm -hmm. But being able to see the ministry of that just explode is so cool. Um, I've loved hearing your stories about this. Do you have any other kind of testimonies that you could share about boxes of books? I think that it's just important to know that not every country has the same access like you're talking about with the VBS and how we do such a great visually exciting things for kids. In some areas of the world, you've got missionaries that are underground that mm -hmm. can't share the gospel by the light of day. They're sharing it in parks at, by moonlight. Um, there's, there's a chapter in the Middle East who said that we had no literature, but after receiving boxes of books in a period of two months, um, we went from having 40 good news clubs as a small team of, of, of Middle Eastern missionaries to having 100 good news clubs. And those statistics show that there's opportunity because of these boxes. Yeah. You think how much we spend even on VBS, mm -hmm. how much time we volunteer. My church is running running one right now. And, you know, I spent all weekend helping, like, put little inflatable animals on the ceiling yeah. by string <laughs> and stuff, you know. And, and there's so much time and energy and money that we put into making these things beautiful. But even just having those visuals in some of these countries where they don't have resources and they don't have opportunity to have a church where you can share the gospel, it makes those outdoor um, gospel opportunities in those dangerous countries far more powerful, far more impactful, and, and allows them to multiply that type of a ministry. Yeah. Uh, all for a single box that we're sending over to them. Yeah. So. Well, and I think something that I'm seeing in these podcasts that we're doing is that the people's hearts are in the right place. They're, they're not doing this. And I'm not saying that our VBS, our hearts are in the wrong place. We just love to minister to kids that way. Mm -hmm. And that's appropriate. That's totally fine. As sure. long as you are doing it for a God-glorifying reason. And that's what we see with these missionaries here who are receiving this simple gift. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, God takes it and just multiplies, like you were saying. So I think that's important to note just just how much God is using these things. We're just a willing vessel to be used by God in all of these ministries that he has uh, laid on various people's hearts in this ministry. So You use the word gift. Someone once said to me, the most important gift that you ever receive is what? Salvation, right? Yes. yes. Sorry, I'm sitting here sweating. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> the most important gift that we can receive is salvation, but the second most important gift that we can receive is the ability to share that salvation with others mm. and that's what the box of books program is doing yeah for sure well i have loved having you here again and uh, joining us to share a little bit more about this ministry it's it's literally just a small piece of how big this ministry is so i've enjoyed getting to hear um, your side of it and you know gpm being able to raise funds for these and everything. This is my little plug for GPM too. <laughs> Go to the website. Yes. You can learn more about donations and yes. how you can give toward these ministries. CEFonline.com slash donate. Yes, please go there. Um, so thank you again for joining us. Absolutely. Thanks it, for having me. Anytime, anytime. Obviously, you've been here three times. We'll call you back <laughs> again. If you would like to learn more about who CEF is and what we believe, you can visit CEFonline.com slash about. You can also learn more about how you can get involved with Boxes of Books by reading our article, Boxes of Books. This will also be linked in the show notes. Be sure to check out Unite Radio, where we unite kids with the gospel through adventures and foundational biblical truths. Give us a like and subscribe to keep up to date on both this podcast and our kids program. Thanks for listening.